Having spoken with the other leaders of the Grand Council, it seems Tarvek has some good news for Lord Volkov. Necrotia, it seems, however, is as busy as ever, and the preparations for the Blood Harvest Ball continue unabated. Volkov welcomes his guest into his personal chamber, a rare honour that only the most elite of vampires are granted. This indicates to Tarvek that something big is about to take place. So, tell me Tarvek, do we have good news? Excellent news, my lord. I have successfully convinced Aranax, Strax, and Karak to support you in the Blood Harvest Ball. You will have no further opposition from them. Good. It seems, however, we have another dissenter amongst the Vampire Council. Algar is causing us problems, and he must be dealt with. Algar is easy to deal with. He is so old, though not as old as the Ancient One. He fails and refuses to see the bigger picture. He is the only vampire who now supports Boris, and therefore stands alone amongst the rest of the council. And he will not be persuaded to see things from my point of view? He doesn't need to. We can dispatch both him and Boris during the Blood Harvest Ball and blame the Vampire Hunter spy. Then we can put it out as a failed hit against you, thus garnering support from the Vampire community. Everything can work to our advantage. We just need to let the visiting assassins from the Guild know what needs to be done. Maximus is already arranging that. I can send word to him quickly of this new line of events. It will not be difficult to make alterations. We still have time to perfect it. As you wish, my lord. You have something else to tell me. Yes, and unfortunately, it's not good news. Things have become a tad complicated in Kali. I don't see why that should concern me. Kali is the responsibility of Maximus. He is the one with interest in the town in the name of his caravan. Well, apart from that, he's discovered that the Academy holds a powerful summoning scroll in its vaults. One that is integral to the Blood Harvest Ball. Oh. It seems that with Cassandra the Vampire Dancer leaving the Academy, it has caused his contact Arik to become much more emboldened. He is refusing to help Maximus retrieve it. I see. You say this scroll is integral to the ceremony, the one we intend to perform at the ball. That is correct, my lord. I understand Maximus is persuading Arik to help him retrieve the scroll. 
However, you know how sketchy information can be when being sent from the outside world. It is never entirely accurate. Indeed. I'm certain Maximus knows what he is doing. I understand. He is working with a rather roguish individual named Rafik. Someone who used to work for the Shadow Court, but now owes Maximus a huge debt. I have little time for the affairs of my son. What he does with his own business is none of my concern. As long as he respects and obeys me, that is what is most important. Now we turn away from Lord Volkov and the vampires, and over to a much more interesting situation. For it seems news of the Blood Harvest has reached the city of Drakenberg, capital city of Draconis, better known as the Firelands. The Dragon Lord is intrigued by this event, and is speaking with his Dragon Minister about it. What is this I hear of the vampires carrying out a special event? Why were the dragons not invited? My master, it is a vampire event only. They are celebrating the first blood harvest with tasting from the reservoir under the city of Dreading. Besides, if the dragons were in attendance, would that not put the monarchy on alert? We must be patient for Volkov's signal. I grow tired of waiting. The envoy has yet to arrive still. We have not heard anything from Drevin for months now. My lord, the dragons are deeply respected by the vampires. Even I know that to reach the Firelands it may take months to find a captain brave enough to enter the port within our lands. My people and the dragons themselves are not the most welcoming of races, are we? I have advised that my own kind act with a little more decorum when strangers arrive in our land. I dare not speak out against you and your fellow dragons. I am satisfied with your response, regardless of the fact that the envoy has not arrived. We still need to get word to and from Volkov. I expect you to see that of course. I will honour your command and commit it to my task. We shall receive word from Drevin in due course. I assure you of that. Good, because if we don't, I shall personally like the power underneath you whilst you are still struggling within your death shroud. I understand, my lord. I totally understand. in the storm crossing the sea. I had to board a ship in Port Allen. Too many questions would have been asked in Port Nightsong. I don't care about that. What news have you brought me from the city of Necrotia? Well, Volkov has managed to help to sway three of the members back to the Grand Council. But there is still one supporting Boris. Four? I need 
Volkov to have majority support of the Council. The blood harvest must go ahead. Well, either way, Boris still plans to stop Maximus from bringing the Dagger of the Tyrant King to the city. Then Volkov won't be able to make the first cut ceremony, and then can be overthrown as a weak leader. Do you ever stop to listen to yourself? It sounds to me that you hold too much confidence in the downfall of Volkov. I have known him for a very long time, and I happen to know he is resourceful. Besides, I want him to carry out the ritual. I understand he will be summoning a particular individual as part of the event. Well, first I've heard of it. I can make sure to let Boris know and then he can be stopped. You really are a total idiot, aren't you? The summoning will be a signal to the dragons. Without it, we will have no knowledge of the next phase of the plan. That dagger must and will get to Necrotia, and the summoning will take place at the Blood Harvest Ball. If I find out that either has been stopped, then the dragons are not only going to attack the monarchy, but will also attack every vampire along the way. But Maximus and Volkov must be stopped. Silence! You have irritated me for far too long. Return from whence you came and do not darken this realm again. I will expect the vampire envoy and the news of Volkov's success. Because if I receive neither, I will make it very clear to the vampire race who betrayed them. Both you and Boris had best watch your backs and sleep with a single eye open. Because I can tell you now that neither of you will ever have the support of the dragons. As the word of the Dragon Lord rings in the ears of his masked visitor, we turn our attention to yet another faction, taking interest in the vampire's schemes. However, it seems that this circle of mages have been charged with the mission to ensure that, even if they can't stop the vampire scourge in its tracks, they can perhaps slow it down. This particular circle is aware of the vampire hunters and appears to be working against them, for it seems they believe the vampires play an important role in the future of the Ondarian monarchy, and it is a future they wish to instigate for their own selfish means. One of the members of the group is the Grand Mage himself, Artem, though without Deera, his apprentice, whom he has clearly left back at the council chambers in Ondar City. I can assure you that the threat of the vampires indeed is truly real. However, we need them more than many of our own realize. I'm not in favor of this idea, to be honest. But I agree, it's our only way of gaining the information we need to retrieve before it's too late. But surely, if we are not careful, the monarch could discover our ruse and put a stop to it. Ah, but the monarch does not suspect anything from the mage council. As far as they are concerned, we are simply studious towards understanding the universe and the world around us. They do not suspect that our existence has been building up for this moment. It was written long ago in the days of the Antius Empire that a great power would rise to sup the blood of the innocent that with whom they serve would be integral to the safety of the power which is to follow. But an empire didn't 
surprise when the old one fell. The monkey was formed along with Jordania and Carletti. This much is true. But remember that it did not perceive a direct correlation to a new empire. It merely states that in the prophecy the power that is to follow, not the empire. I still don't understand, Autumn. How are we becoming involved in all of this? We are actually aiding the vampires in their scheme. Are we betraying the monarchy? We are not aiding the vampires. We are most certainly not betraying the monarchy. The blood harvest is the perfect time to witness vampire activity and to understand their inner circle. Their inner circle? That would mean we would have to infiltrate their society. There's not a mage brave or foolish enough to walk right into Nakosha and take up residence there. I agree. Any thought of attending the Blood Harvest Ball would be suicidal. We can't condone such a course of action, Artem. Artem isn't talking about sending a mage into the city. I have come up with a solution to this matter, so allow me to explain. The city of Necrotia is protected by powerful sigils that keep us out. However, they cannot keep out a controlled spirit. With my skills, I can create an artificial spirit which we can send in to observe the vampires through the seer's mirror. If I manage to balance the energy just right, it will be undetectable to Volkov and his followers. Grimwald has been working on a formula to create such an entity. We can send it in without it ever being known that it is there watching the vampires. That is, of course, unless they have a particularly powerful psychic amongst them. All vampires have psychic abilities. What makes you certain the spirit will not be discovered? I have my doubts. This plan will succeed. I suggest we act with caution and make full plans to infiltrate the city of Nekrosia after the blood harvest ball. Then it is a risk we must take. The fate of the Ondarian monarchy and its provinces are in our hands. The vampire hunters are ill-equipped and heavily outnumbered, thankfully. So it is up to us to work out a solution. I believe we are acting too quickly. We could alert the vampires to our plan and they will be ready to strike the moment we send the spirit into the palace with one of their traps. That is a risk I personally feel. We should not be taking. The vampire hunters should never have been allowed to exist in the first place. I argued for months against its founding. They undermine the use of magical combat against the creatures of the Nat. Be that as it may, they will be dealt with by Volkov and his kin soon. We no longer have to worry about them. I don't like this cloak and dagger plan. It goes against what the Grand Order of Mages stands for. I'm glad to see you are listening to reason. 
I would say at least give myself and others time to think things through. I agree with Karam. If we let the hunters deal with the vampires or vice versa, we can focus on the more important things like preventing the return of the tyrant king. Let us focus on that which we have charged ourselves to carry out and learn about the Blood Harvest Ball and the events of the Blood Harvest Ball firsthand. Whilst the mages plot their every move and prepare to create this artificial spirit, let us once again turn our gaze back on to Maximus. Still with the caravan, he has made his way back to Ondar City to speak with Gideon, his associate once again, for news has reached him of another artifact that would bring him good fortune with his father for it is another artifact that would be greatly received during the Blood Harvest Ball. I'm surprised to see you here so quickly, Maximus. Not going to throttle me this time? As much as I enjoyed the last time, no. Besides, you've clearly learnt your lesson. No mad serial act this time, I noticed. As soon as I received word you were back in Ondar City on business, I realised you were on your way here for the artefact. I expect you want to see it. Is it safe? Oh, it's very safe. Locked away from prying eyes. Come out the back, though there'll be no magic needed to access what I have in store for you. It's more magnificent than I anticipated. And you're sure this is the shield held by the Tyrant King in the final days of the Civil War? Absolutely. It bears his crest. I understand you already have his dagger. You should have the shield too. 20,000 Krell, and it's yours. Only 20? With an artifact like this, I'd assume you want more than that. I know not to double-cross you, Maximus. It's better to give you a fair price directly than to have to haggle with you. Besides, I don't know if my larynx could last much longer when arguing with you. <laughs> it's good to know you've learned not to overcharge your best customer. By the way, Octavius sends his regards. Well, well, well. Octavius Petrovich alive and well. That is a surprise. Where is he located now? Garalos. He has a small shop, though bigger and better than his brother's. Did he ask about his brother at all? <laughs> Didn't care for him at all. Plus, it was him who sold me the dagger. Like you, he dropped the price. Made out too many people turned it down when they discovered its history. But I know when he's lying. He's as bad as his brother for that. True. Now, how do you want the shield? Wrapped and take it now, or do you want it delivered? I'll take the shield now. Here's your 20,000 Krell, and for once, Gideon, I'm actually feeling generous. So here's an extra 10,000 Krell tip for yourself, and you can tell Petrovich and watch him stew. I'll get my 100,000 Krell from him eventually, even if he has to work up a whole load of other debts to do it. Perhaps I'll make it harder for him. Oh, ho, 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 ho. 
Yes, a million krell. That'll put the panic into him. Oh, that will be fun. Fine, fine, whatever you want. Thanks for the tip too. Here's the shield. Be sure to keep it safe. There's a lot of trophy hunters after this. Oh, don't you worry about that. I know exactly where to take it for safekeeping. The same place I took the dagger. Well, Gideon, has he retrieved this shield? Yes, my lord. He is taking it to the vault in the Crocia. But what I don't understand is why you are letting him retrieve the artifacts if you already know of them. Why can't you collect them? Because, unlike him, I am unable to touch them. It's all part of the curse placed upon the items in question. The summoning scroll found in Kali will help to lift that curse, but for now the items will remain safe, hidden in Necrotia. Then everything is falling into place, and the Blood Harvest Ball will be the perfect place to showcase the power within the artifacts. Yes. Well, keep me informed if you and Octavius come across any other pieces of the Tyrant King's artifacts. I shall, my lord. I shall very much indeed. With another artifact of the Tyrant King being found, is it just possible that his crown might be discovered in the same manner? Could Maximus's quest be for nothing? However, it is not about the Tyrant King. This is about the Blood Harvest Boar. So just how do these artifacts play into the ceremony? Will Volkov finally be able to touch them again? Will the mages finally be able to get their spirit into the event without being discovered? And if it is, what will happen to it and them? Will the vampires use a spell to corrupt them into dark mages? Also, what part will the dragons play? And why are they so keen for the entity to be summoned from the scroll? There are so many questions to be answered, and many of them will not be answered until the night of the Blood Harvest Ball itself. For now, all we know is that many things will happen during this event, and it's bound to be a most exciting time for the vampires when it finally comes to fruition.